In this video, we're going to look into how we can use the flip normal sliding scene in Modo. We start by going to uh, File, Import. Then we set uh, select the OBJ we want. You get up a little dialog box here to hit OK. And this is going to load it in. It might take a little bit of time depending on how heavy your OBJ is. So now it's going to load it in here in the viewport. Uh, you might have to rotate it around a bit, scale it up. We've already done that, so we don't really annoy you too much with that. We'll just do a tiny bit of adjustment. Just select a group, because it creates a group here for you, uh, in without the hier uh, outside of the hierarchy here. So just um, select a group, hit W to uh, to move it, and just move it around a tiny bit. Then the way this is set up is that we have a light group where all the lights are. You don't really have to worry about this, because this is all pre-made. But if you do want to look into this, you can see for each light setup we have, there is um, there's a there's a name for it, and there's a color, which is approximately color, the average color you're gonna have. For each light, you also have um, your name, and they're all area lights. So you have a name, key, fill, backlight, and you have an intensity, and you'll set, you'll set the visible to reflections or infractions, but not to camera. So you can adjust this. But by default, you don't really have to worry about this. Yeah, no, it's completely customizable. But and the presets that we've made are just like, these are what we think look great. Yeah. But you can experiment as much as you want, really. Feel free to move them around, rotate them, delete lights, whatever works for you. So once we have our character in here and it's and fits to the camera. And oh, by the way, we uh, use, uh, we're in the render tab now. And uh, we're using the standard cam. There is a close-up cam as well, which is, well, it's more close-up. But we're just going to use the standard cam for now. And um, yeah, once that's set up, we just drag the group into the char folder. Under char, we have two things here. We have char and we have 360 turntable. The 360 turntable is exactly that. If you rotate or if you scrub the timeline now, you can see that you have a, you have a 360 degree animation of it. Yeah, it's just an easy way to get like a turntable out. Yeah, if you want to render out daily or if you just want to check out different angles, it's just really nice. You don't have to manually rotate it around. And to be honest, this is it. <laughs> that, that's the setup. You import your model, you drag the group in here. We, we just have to go to passes now, over to the right here. And you just select the group you want to go into, and uh, or the, the light setup you want to go into. Uh, you just um... And these are all based on, on the overview that we've included. So yeah. you just check the overview. What do I want? I want my render to look like this. Then you activate that pass yeah. and uh, you're good to go. This is really quick. Like this is all set up with the correct materials and um, yeah, the correct lighting. So each um, each light here, or yeah, each light pass here has its own material or all own light setup. So all are hidden except for one. Same with the materials. The way the materials are set up is that um, if you're going to a shader tree here, we have some for pedestals because we have a pedestal material or pedestals, which we'll get into later on. We have a char material, a char item. This is just connected to the char group. So anything would you put into the char group will have uh, the correct shader to it. There's also a mat here, which is uh, it's just an alpha for the, for the character. And then we have all the materials. They're separated into three groups. We have general materials, like we have some glass, some uh, marble, and just general colors. Then we have uh, subsurface scattering materials, which are really nice. Give you just a nice, well, sort of scattering feel. <laughs> and then we have clay materials, which, well, they're more clay like. And you might notice that there are a bit more materials than there are render scenes. Yeah. And this is just to make it easier for you to just experiment with your models, just throw on some different materials and see what looks good. Yeah, exactly. You just have more options, basically. And you can see there, there is now one which is visible here the, the char concept gray. And this is the one which is on the character now. So you, as you saw, you didn't have to actually assign any materials to it. But if you do want to change this, you can easily do this. You can just unhide or hide this, and you can unhide something else. If you wanted the clay brown, for instance, you can easily you can easily have that active, and this is going to update in the preview. And boom, you suddenly have a different light setup. Yeah, and if you want a different render pass, like if you wanted a like say, okay, now I've looked at the over, what do we want? We want the light to be different. You just select the passes, yeah. and then. It just re-renders again. Yeah, and it changes the material. So now it's a completely different light setup with a completely different set of materials. And you can see how fast you can actually prototype on this. Yeah. Like, boom, really quickly, a new setup. 
So this is one of the strengths here. And it, you don't you don't have to think too much when you're lighting. <laughs> no. You can you can just try all these out, and within seconds you have all these um, all these nice setups. So I'm just gonna go back to number three one because that's it's pretty nice. And uh, as a pro tip, if you if you just uh, paint over where you want your your rendering to happen in the viewport, it will just uh, render the, the details there before or quicker. So that's really nice. And another cool thing is here in the preview, you can actually see something like the character mat that yeah. uh, we've created for it. So because it's in where it's at, we get a, a nice mat for the character. So later in Photoshop, you'll be able to change the hue, the saturation, or whatever you want without having to actually re-render. Yeah. And this is this chap. It's under char and char mat. And if you also, if you, you see here, we have a lot of different render outputs. So for instance, we have, they're all hidden by default because you don't really need them. They're still nice to have. So we have, for instance, direct illumination. If you activate that, we can go under um, here and just set illumination and direct. And you can see all the direct illumination here. And that is such a beautiful render. It's wonderful. <laughs> but this is kind of cool though, that yeah. you can do that because you can now, sometimes it works that you just want you just want indirect illumination because that can look really cool sometimes. Yeah. And um, then we're going to look into um, yeah, the pedestals. We have a couple of pedestals here. We, I'll just hide the character for this. So we have five pedestals here. And these can be a very nice way to present your model. Say you want like this traditional, oh, I've made a clay sculpture, put it on top of one of these pedestals and it kind of looks more perceptible. Yeah. Yeah, it just looks cool. We also have five different materials for the pedestals or something like that yeah i mean these are the, the the pedestal materials aren't restricted to those i mean you can no. throw any you know throw some sss materials on them as yeah, well exactly it doesn't really matter so you can just hire you can just assign it for one as well yeah so these are really nice it's just a nice way of yeah as martin says presenting your model and um let's hide those and another really cool thing that is included in this is with the um, moto 901 is that we actually have control over the actual camera now yeah so if we wanted something like depth of field, that's actually something that's possible. And, yeah. it, and Moto makes this really easy now. Yeah. So we're going to look into, into that now. And um, just before we look into that, uh, we go into the final color output. And you can see we change the exposure control to photographic. This means that something with like the f-stop, shutter speed, and ISO, which you can find here, we um, will actually control the brightness of the image now. And like, you don't actually need to know anything about cameras in order to use this. No. Because the way it's set up, it makes it really easy to get more or less yeah. like level of blur in your picture. Exactly. So let's say we want some depth of field into this now. Uh, it's already enabled, uh, but if it's not, or you use the scene later on and you disable it, just hit uh, enable depth of field. And um, you can just hit control F. This is just a nice little pro tip for you. If you hit control F in the preview, this is just going to set autofocus. You can see the autofocus distance now on the screen right here, is changing based on where I click. Yeah, it's so easy. <laughs> it's really clever. So I usually put the depth of field or, or the focus on um, on the eye of the character. And now we can um, adjust the, the f-stop. The f-stop is, the lower the f-stop is, the, the blurrier the image is gonna be. So we can just like divide this by uh, two, and we get one. So it's gonna be slightly blurrier now, but you can see that it also becomes a lot brighter like you would do in a real camera it just so happens that if you then go down to shutter speed and you multiply the shutter speed by a factor of four then the lighting is going to be one to one again yeah. and now you're going to have Ta -da. a lot more blurring in the photo and yeah. the lighting is going to look exactly the same so you can just keep on doing this you can just divide this by two and you can just keep multiplying this by four and this is really cool, so this is a little pro tip. You don't actually have to bring out a calculator. You can just, <laughs> in here, yeah, just, it's really nice. It's really nice, because we don't want to do math. We want to make pretty images. So you can just keep doing that. As you can see, the brightness is exactly the same as it was before, but now you have this tiny little blur here. So yeah, you can just enable or disable this, what you want, depending on what you want. One pro tip as well is if you go under Options in the preview and disable GI, GI was disabled now, uh, but um, this is just making it faster. But if you disable GI, it's gonna look, uh, it's gonna be a lot faster to render. Yeah, especially in the preview, because then you 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 know you just want to shuffle around and see what the different passes yeah, look like. Exactly. But for your final render, you know you might want to keep it on. Yeah. And uh, this is also under options, global animation. This is independent from the final render. So if it's if it's disabled here, it will still be enabled in the final one. 
And that's basically it for, for uh, all the setup here. We just gonna take a quick look now at render settings here, just under render and under properties. So we have two cameras here. So just set the render camera to whichever you want. This just needs to be set, otherwise it's gonna render from wrong camera. Uh, we choose the standard cam. We have a resolution here. This is also kind of cool. You can just uh, type, for instance, times two, and it's gonna render twice the size. And if you hit control enter, it's gonna do it for both inputs. It's pretty handy. You can also just get it back, divide it by two, and hit control enter. Uh, you can select your bucket width. It's fine by 32. Under settings, it's by default set to 32 anti-aliasing samples. If you're doing depth of field, you probably want to set this to something like 128 or 256. But for without without in depth of field, it's perfectly acceptable to have this. The lights are also controlled by uh, by the light samples here, uh, so just set the light samples here what you want. If you see that it's blurry or not grainy, just up the light samples. But yeah, I mean everything really is set up to just straight out of the box yeah. to just be renderable. This yeah, is just exactly. sort of like if you want to want to go more in depth with the settings, you yeah. totally can. Yeah, exactly. And another pro tip is one of the reasons we, we include this like reflection, specularity, illumination, and that stuff is that you can then debug the scene easier. For instance, if you see noise in your scene, it can be really hard to figure out exactly where noise comes from. It's a GI, shadows, uh, specularity. But by enabling something like specularity here or reflection, we can just go right into it here and just see the reflection, render it out. And if there is noise in the, in the specular pass, we know exactly where it comes from. So that's very handy. And that's it. As you can see, it's it's a very quick setup. Like you can literally get nice looking renders within 20, 30 seconds. Just drag your model in, put it in the character group, shuffle around the, the groups here, and, uh, and that's it. We're, we're just gonna show you one more feature as well before I render this out, is if you go into render and render passes, and you select the pass group, which is lights, this will just render out all your all your render outputs or render passes here. And this is really cool. It's basically like you just throw in one model, yeah. you get out 13 different light scenarios. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. then you can just in Photoshop with that, or you can just um, you can just go for lunch and you suddenly have 13 <laughs> rendered lights set up when you get back. Really cool stuff. We're not going to do this now, but uh, you definitely want to experiment with that.